You know how when you're learning vocabulary, there are certain words that you phase out of your vocabulary in order to use more advanced vocabulary? Like, for example, you stop necessarily using the word nice all the time. You might still use it, but you stop calling this is nice and that was nice and it was nice and she was nice. You say more advanced words than that. Um, in math, we have this special notation called function notation, and it's a more advanced way of writing the equations that we've been dealing with. We already know y equals mx plus b, but now I want to write it as f of x equals mx plus b. The way that we read this is we say f of x. That's what this is saying. So I would read that as f of x equals mx plus b. f of x is the same as saying y. So y equals mx plus b is the same. f represents the name of the function, and x represents the input value. So all we're saying is that the number inside the parentheses is what we're putting into this expression on the other side. So letter A, we would read that as evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x equals 2. This is the same as back when you did 6th grade. Wherever you see an x, put a 2. So f of 2 equals negative 4 times 2 plus 7. Everywhere I put an x, everywhere I saw an x, I put a 2. So that includes here and here. So what is f of 2? Well, f of 2 equals negative 8 plus 7. So f of 2 equals negative 1. That's saying that when you plug in 2, you get negative 1. So that's kind of like the point 2, negative 1. It's not kind of like it is. So that's what this is saying. This is saying the point 2, negative 1, only it's written in what's called function form. In example 2, we're evaluating another function, but instead of it being the x, we actually have the final result. You see, the negative 7 is not in the x spot. It's in the, like, answer spot. So I'm going to substitute negative 7 in for the answer, not for x. So anywhere I see this phrase, h of x, which in this case is here, that's where the negative 7 will go. So negative 7 equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Another way that you know that you're not, um, that you don't know x is because it says find the value of x. So obviously x is going to stay in the equation because you don't know it. So in this instance, because I don't have all the values on one side, I have to do inverses. So I'll drop a line here. First thing is to add 5. And so I get negative 2 equals 2 thirds x. How do you get rid of the 2 thirds? If you said divide by 2 thirds, then you are not listening to any of the inverses that I taught you. It's multiply by the reciprocal. Hopefully you said that. If you said divide by 2 thirds, you're not mathematically wrong, but you will end up multiplying by the fraction 3 halves anyway because you have, in order to divide by a fraction, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So it just makes sense to do it right away. So now negative 2 over 1 times 3 halves is a final answer of negative 3 equals x. So if negative 3 is x, then f of negative 3 equals negative 7 because that's the point negative 3, negative 7. If you were to plot this line, uh, y equals 2 thirds x minus 5, the point negative 3, negative 7 would be on it. Sorry, my negative signs are a little crooked. Um, but the official answer to the question, find the value of x, is this right here. x is negative 3. All right, graphing a linear function is the same as graphing y equals mx plus b, right? Because f of x is the same as y. So we're 
basically graphing y equals 2x plus 5, but instead we're writing it as f of x equals 2x plus 5. So the concept is the same. You're just changing the way that you notate it. In order to graph, we need the slope and the intercept. So um, I'll make a four-quadrant grid. Oh, that's crooked. y and x. So now plot the intercept and go up to right one. Oops, I ran out of space, so I have to go down to left one. And I'll make a bunch of points so I have a very accurate line. And connect them. And write the name of it on the line, f of x equals 2x plus 5. Please start practicing with your advanced notation, f of x. This key concept section actually talks to us about something we already know, which is that when you add a constant to something, kind of like the intercept, the way that the slope and y-intercept interact with each other. When you add a number and it's positive, the line shifts up. So given the same slope, for example, um, if you have two equations and let's say one is y equals 2x and the other is y equals 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3 will be the same line, only three points higher than the original. And if you have y equals 2x minus 4, then it would be the same looking line, only it would be shifted 4 points down. So obviously now instead of y, we're using f of x, but it's the same kind of notation. So it's that same concept that we learned about all the way back in chapter 2. So let's look at example 4. We want to graph these two functions, g of x equals x minus 3, and then compare it to f of x equals x. So remember, this is just like graphing the line y equals x minus 3. Oops, sorry, my 3 is a little crooked. And this is just like graphing the line y equals x. So pause the video and graph those two. Um, and then when you're done graphing them, play, but be careful, don't label it y equals, label it g of x and f of x. All right, so this is the graph, and now we just have to do the last thing, which is to compare the graphs. So they want us to compare this original, this red one, to the green one. So what happened if the green one was the starting graph, because that's the graph they want us to compare it to, what happened to make the red graph? And if you notice, each point just kind of shifted down three. It's the same line, just moved down. So if you look at the x-axis, this point went down three, uh, this point went down three, this point went down three, they all went down three, which makes sense because they have the same slope, it's just that their intercept value got shifted. So our sentence will say that g of x is three points below f of x. Now some of you more advanced thinkers might be reading the question and saying, wait a second, do we have to graph the f of x? Because all it says is to compare it to the graph. So you don't. You have to graph this one because it says specifically graph this function. But if you can visualize what f of x equals x looks like, right, a line like that going through the origin, then the only graph that you really need to graph is the red one, and then you will just write down that g of x would be three points below. But this is another example of where you want to make sure that you read the directions so you definitely graph the one that they are asking for. But it's always helpful if you want to graph both. Last one together. Re pause the video, read the question, and um, if you have trouble, I'll help you solve it. So when you're ready, play. So it says it's the same speed, but it's going 50 miles farther. So instead of it going to 300, it's going to 350. So I'm going to graph it on this grid. You can do it on yours as well. 
So the slope is still, uh, it looks like the slope is down two boxes, right one. Yep, so I'm just going to do it down two, right one. Down two, right one. Down two, right one. So there's my grid, and that is my new function. Which statement is true about the graph of the function that represents the second flight compared to the graph that represents the first flight? Well, it's the same speed, so the slope isn't changing. And this graph is a shift up 50, because to go from 300 to 350, it went up. So it's letter D, the graph is a translation 50 units up. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.